In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these athlete cards. Some of the features of these athlete cards are you are going to be able to select whatever metric you want here on the left hand side. You'll see the athlete's most recent score for that metric as well as their max in that metric. And then you'll see the amount of days that it's been since they've been able to achieve that max. Secondly, we'll have a drop down menu so that you can change between your athletes. It will automatically update their status based on their wellness report. And at a glance, you'll be able to see all of the athletes on a nice printable sheet. This is going to be a multi-part series, so let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And to get this video started, what I've gone ahead and done is just framed out where one of these athlete cards might sit. And there's a few sections that we're going to add in here. So the first thing is going to be the metric that we're looking for. So all I've done here is basically taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine rows and then two columns and these columns are 100 pixels wide and then the rest of these columns are 100 pixels wide as well oh 100 and that allows me to basically um, frame out our athlete card here so um, this is where we will recall the athlete photo and then this is the metric and we want the recent the max and then the days since that metric um, in here is where we're going to put the status and then um, name so you can see this name box is just basically two rows by three columns the status is three columns by one row and then each of these are one column um, by one row so now in order to get this dashboard created the first thing we have to do is actually have some data so I'm going over here to my data tab and this is how my data looks. What I'm going to do here though is just take this data. We basically have the athlete name, the date, the score from each of these tests, bench press, squat, counter movement, jump, non counter movement, and trap bar deadlift. And I am going to give these um, basically, I'm going to basically turn these into data by giving them their own view. So what we'll do is we'll format them with alternating colors and we're going to add a header to these. And all this does is help me to determine where my data is sitting in my chart. If I do that all the way down, then I know that I'm going to be creating my data in that spot. Um, from there, I have the wellness data sitting beside it. I'm gonna do the same thing for that data as well. So I'll go to insert, or sorry, format, alternating colors, and let's give this a different color. And that's just going to tell me that that is a different table. So that is all of my data and what I need to do in order to reference this data is I'll need to make some named ranges. So the first named range I'm going to make is from A1 all the way to G1. And we're going to go to data, um, named font or a named range. And I'm just going to call this um, performance header. And that will be my named range for that. And then the second one we'll make is for this wellness data. We're going to call this wellness header and then the third one we'll make is for the performance data so that is going to be from A1 all the way to G so we'll add a range it says it's going from G2 but we want it to go all the way through G and we'll call this performance data and then we'll do the same thing for our wellness data so um, I2 all the way to K we're going to call this wellness data and I'll hit done here. So that is all of my data. Now it's a good um, it's a good practice to have named ranges for your data because when we go to write out our Google formulas, it's easier to reference this than to constantly come back and select the ranges that we're looking at. So then from there, I like to have a tab called controls. And controls is just a tab where all of the Im information that I might need to pull out at any one time lives. So the first thing that we're going to need to pull out is actually our headers. So what I can do here is go equals transpose unique and then I'm going to put in that header. So performance header and then I'll close that all off and right away this is going to automatically um, give me all of my headers for my performance data. If I were to go back and add one, so let's say between squat and bench rest, we inserted a column here and I wanted like 40 meter time, it will automatically add that into my um, 
control panel here. And the reason that it's adding it is, is because it's between the first and the last column. So Google Sheets will automatically update our range to include anything within there. So it's usually a good practice just to go from athlete name all the way to the end and then create any of your new tests within your table. And that way all of your functions and formulas will still work. So let's delete that. Then the next thing I want to pull out is my dates. So what I'll do is the same thing. I'm going to go equals unique and open that up. The range we want here is um, data B2 all the way down. And that is just going to give me all of the dates for my tests. And then the last one we might want is all of our athlete names. So I'll go equals unique. And the reason I'm using unique is because I only want each record once if it occurs multiple times. So we want A basically two all the way to A. And when I hit enter, there's all of my athlete names. I'm just going to center justify all of this so it looks a little bit better. So from here, what I can do is I can give these their own names as well. So this first one, I'm going to call it tests. And I'm going to go from A2 all the way down. This second one. I'll call it test dates and I'm going to go from B2 all the way down and then this third one we're going to call it, um, well actually we'll do this on our athlete list. So um, from here what I'll do is copy all of these athlete names and I'm going to create an athlete info tab and I will just paste those names in here. Normally we would do this the other way around but because of the way this sheet is being created we're going to do it backwards. So now I have all of my athlete names. And then what I can do is just insert their headshot here. So in order to do this, all I would do is go to a column or a cell and I could go to insert and then um, image and then I could put image in cell and it's going to allow me to select an image. I have images in my Google Drive so I could easily just take an athlete picture of some kind and it's going to put it right in there but you could use a link or really whatever you wanted. So I'm going to create some named ranges here. So what we'll call this is um, cancel, we'll add a range here. We'll go from A2 to B and we'll call this athlete data and I'll hit done. And then I'll create another named range for my athlete names. So I'll go add range A2 all the way down, athlete names. So I know that that was a lot of named ranges, but to recap what we've done, basically we've taken our data, we've made one named range for the headers, one named range for the data, and then wellness data, one named range for the headers, one named range for the data, and then controls, we've made one named range for all of the tests that we filtered out with transpose and unique, one named range for all of the dates, and then we've created an athlete info tab one named range for all of the athlete um, data, and then one named range for all of the athlete names. And you'll see why this is so powerful in a minute. If I go back to my actual um, tab here, what we can start to do here is I can do something like this. So under my name column, I'll go to data, data validation, and I'm gonna add a rule, and I want a dropdown um, from range, and we're gonna call it athlete names. And right away, it's going to load in all of those athlete names. I'm going to go to advanced options. And I like to choose arrow because I like to have it just sit right in there. And I'll hit done. So you can see, instead of having to go and select that range, I can just use the name range that we've created. In my VLOOKUP or uh, my athlete headshot column here, we're going to use a formula called VLOOKUP. So what I'll type is equals VLOOKUP. And I'll open that up. And I want to... Search for this athlete name, so H6, and I want to search for it in athlete data. And then I want to return the second column, and my data is not sorted, so I'll hit uh, false. And when I hit enter, now it's going to return my headshot. And the reason that that works is because VLOOKUP is asking what I want to search for, which is the name we've selected. Where do I want to search for it in that range that we've already created? What column do I want to reference the second one? and then false means that my data is not sorted. So enter, and as I switch between the different 
names, the um, headshot will automatically update. The next one that I want to do is the metrics here. So I'll do another data validation. So I'll select all of these metrics here, add rule, and I'm going to call it, I just forgot what my named range was called, one sec. We want perf um, tests. So I'll select all of these here, do my data validation. It's this one here. We want drop down from range, tests. I'll hit enter, there's all of my tests and I want to make it an arrow. And now I can select all of my tests. So we want bench press, squat, counter movement jump, non counter movement and trap bar. Those are all of my tests. So now from here, what we wanna do is actually index the max of this test. So for this, what we're gonna do is use a formula called filter. I'm gonna do it off to the side so you can see how it works. I'm gonna type equals filter open this up and we are going to index um, performance data comma it's going to ask us what row we want all of the rows comma what column we want to match for the test so we're going to match sorry m-a-t-c-h open that up we want to search for the test that we've selected comma we want to search for it in performance headers comma, um, false, because it's not sorted again. And then when do we want to do that? Well, we want to do it when, um, so athlete names, so we're going to select that cell. So data A2 to A is equal to, back to here, the one that we've selected. And I'll close this off, hit enter. And what you'll see is it's going to return all of the values for bench press for that athlete. If we were to change this, it's going to automatically change. Okay. Now, in order to get the max, all we do now is wrap this in a max formula. So what it's going to do now is just take the biggest one. So 258. So I'm just going to copy this formula and then paste it in here. Now, in order to drag this down, the things that I'm going to have to lock in place with F4 are this, because I know data A2 to A, A is never going to change, and I know it's always going to be stored in H6, so we'll lock that in, and then instead of locking in the, um, the whole thing, we're just going to lock in the, um, sorry, we're just going to lock in the column, and then we should be okay. It'll auto-fill it down. I'm just going to fix the formatting here. There we go. So there's our formatting. So what we have is our max squat, max counter movement jump, and max trap bar deadlift. Okay, so now in order to find the most recent one, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is find out when the um, all the dates are for that test. So basically to do this, we're gonna take this same formula Copy this, and now instead of matching for the test, what I want to match for is the date. So we'll go comma, date, or sorry, quotations, date, quotations, and it's going to give me all of the dates. Okay, I'm just going to clean up this formula a little bit. So there's all of the dates that this athlete has a score for that test. We need to do one more check here and make sure that there actually is a score for that test. And the way that we do that is I'm just going to take this whole thing again, paste it at the end, and say does not equal blank, comma. So instead of date now, we just want to match for that test, which is G10. Again, I'm going to lock in the column and hit enter, and it's really not gonna change anything here, but if we were to go to athlete one and delete the data for 2022-0130, what I'll do right now, so athlete one, 2021-0230, we will delete their data for that. What you're gonna notice is that one has now disappeared, and the reason for that is because we're checking to see if it's blank, okay? So now, 
what I want to do is go back to this data and I'm just going to undo that because I want that data there. The next thing I'm gonna do is build out a formula to pull out the max version of this date. So all we do is go max and wrap it in there. Okay, now the last part of this is in order to pull out the most recent test, what we can do is just copy this formula here. So if we remember, this formula gives me the max. If I take away this max, it will give me um, all of the values. Now if we put one last clause in it, it basically says if index um, performance data, comma, comma, match. Now we want to match for date, comma, performance header, comma, false is equal to our most recent date, which is scored in Q10, comma. So what it's giving me now is the most recent score because it's essentially looking at this date, which we've already figured out is the most recent one with data and pulling it back. So an easy way that we could do this now and put it all in one formula is instead of saying Q10, what I can do is just copy this formula and where it says Q10 in here, I'm just going to hit control enter to go down a row and paste that formula. So we've just nested the two formulas together. So essentially how this formula works is we want to filter index the performance data. Okay. When the test matches um, this one here, and then we want to do it when the name matches the names in the, um, data call or the name column. And we want to do it when the date matches this whole formula that pulls out the max date. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy this whole formula and paste it under here. And we should be able to drag this down. No problem. Nope. We just have to fix some of our references. So the first thing we want is we don't want the column on this to change. We don't want data A2 to A2 to change. We want H6 to stay where it is. That's all fine. Um, that shouldn't change. That shouldn't change. And then that should be fine. Now we're able to drag that down. And let's fix this. We'll fix our formatting here just to make it look nice again. So there we have it. That's the first part of our tutorial. And basically what we've done is we've created all of our named ranges. We've put our data together, we've created our athlete info tab, and then we've pulled out the max test and the most recent test for that athlete to make sure that it works. As we switch our athletes here, what you'll be able to see is the tests actually change. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll do is we'll calculate the number of days it's been since that athlete has hit that test, and that's a couple of complicated formulas, and then we'll start to build this out as an actual dashboard. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please share it with somebody that you think would also find um, benefit in it. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.